Yes. It's almost go time. This video is sponsored by Reynolds Polymer. Welcome back guys. I am super pumped for this project. I know that I had said it's going to be a while or a couple of years, but things just changed. So stay tuned for an epic video. I've been working on this project for a little over a year now, off and on, trying to make sure that I do this piece justice. So we're loading up here, getting ready to take this piece down to Hunsky Hardwoods down in Sacramento, California. They were very generous enough to offer to mill the top of this to make it flat so that the acrylic top will sit nice and level. If you're not familiar with the first part to this project, this is a 1500 year old redwood root system that I purchased down in LA from GL Veneer. I'll be sure to throw a link down below so you guys can check out that video as well. So we just loaded up the big root onto the mill. Definitely takes the cake with how nervous I was. I knew that we were gonna have to take off quite a bit of this top. That way we had enough touch points for the acrylic to sit on flat and also to have enough support. Nick and his pop suggested that we do a small pass first just to see kind of where we're at and also to see how this redwood root system milled. I'm gonna make a base. We cut it at 35 before, huh? Yeah, so it'd be right at. We actually only ended up doing two passes, and this is our last one right here. It did give us enough touch points throughout the top for the acrylic. I will have to make a few standoffs, but all in all, it went really well. Okay, so the milling is done. Very relieved, but I had something else up my sleeve because I knew we would have to take off so much. I needed the bottom profile traced. So I had prepared some cardstock that I taped together. So I'm gonna trace this bottom profile and I'm gonna use it so I can make a base that's gonna elevate this about an inch. Super grateful that they were able to do this for me as well. I don't have the manpower or the machinery to pick this thing up. Did a real rough outline just to give me some allowance, just in case I needed to move some stuff around. Because at this point, I didn't know what type of base I was actually going to make yet. So I wanted to make sure I had some extra room. Nick and his dad made this process super easy and honestly I was really stressed out doing this, transporting it a few hours away on an open trailer at that. They really put my mind at ease and honestly did it flawlessly. Couldn't be more thankful. So now we're going to load her back up, strap her down, get back home and start the real work. Working on something like this, you really don't know which angle to take. So at first I took my Lee Nelson number seven. I started flattening out a lot of the resaw marks from the bandsaw mill. The reason I did this is because if I was to start with just sanding or my orbital, I felt that I would probably burn through some of the smaller touch points that were flat versus the larger surface area ones. The last thing that I wanted was getting this thing into place, getting the acrylic on top and not touching some of the actual flat parts. Okay, so I'm starting with 80 grit on all of these resawed portions. And I'm working up to, as you see right here, this is 400 grit. My goal is to get all of these surfaces to a kind of a semi-gloss, not super high sheen, but as high sheen as I can get with the dry sanding without any wet sanding or any finish. You'll see as I progress through some of the grits here, actual grain structure becomes much darker and enriched. And it gives it a really good and cool juxtaposed look that I just absolutely loved. Good golly, after seeing this top all polished up, I started getting super pumped to see all of the chainsaw cut sides, how they would actually turn out, because I knew that each piece was going to be different, each piece was going to have its own character, some were going to be darker or lighter, hand sanding all of these pieces one by one, all the way through the grits, just see for yourself here in a minute, they just come out damn good. You're probably going to ask the question, why is he not using finish on these parts? To be honest with you, this wood is so petrified and hard, I figured it'd be a really cool way to kind of showcase just the wood itself. How Mother Nature has basically morphed this into a piece of stone over the past 1500 years. 
So if you followed the journey of this route, originally it was supposed to be for the watchtower guest house for my client, but then it ended up being a little bit too big for it. So we were going to put it outside of that watchtower house under a covered patio, but things have changed and it's going somewhere completely different and you got to stay tuned to the end to find out. So I actually ended up finding some high grit sandpaper, some 10,000 and 12,000. So I did every surface all the way up to 12,000 grit. And you'll see here that it just really makes the wood come to life. It just pops. And most of you who know who work with redwood, it's typically very soft. To get something like this to such a high polish, you can just envision how hard this stuff actually is. All right, so you remember that template I made? I figured out what I'm going to do. Initially, I was just going to do all wood, but I figured it'd be really cool to break it up a little bit. So I bought a sheet of 3 16 hot rolled steel. I traced it. I cut it. I started a couple fires, but we good, baby. On to a little steel prep. I wanted to keep some of the rough edges from the plasma cut because this root is kind of raw. I just went over it real quick and softened all the edges. From Reynolds Pollen, where I did get the samples in, I got a one and a half inch and then a two inch. And honestly, I thought the two inch was cool, but just a little bit thick for this project. So I ended up going with the one and a half inch for the top. I think one of the hardest parts of this project was choosing the type of wood for the base to kind of mesh with the steel. This is Philippine mahogany. It, it actually finishes out red, just like the root. So I figured it would be a great pairing. Normally when I do glue ups, I always use my domino, but since this is kind of a unique one-off piece, I didn't know quite where everything was going to lie and I didn't want a chance running into a domino while cutting the profile. So I had to clamp each joint. The next day I took the Rotex and rough sanded the top to get some of the glue off, traced my profile that looks kind of like a dog now that I look at it. Did a little trace work all the way around to get my profile and I started shaping it with my handy dandy DeWalt jigsaw. When I trace this profile, I actually used a washer as my scribe. That way I had a half inch larger reveal than what the actual steel was. I really tried to find a way to make all of this very cohesive, not out of place, and just really work together. At the end of this video, I would truly love your feedback, whether you hate it, you love it, any suggestions you have for the next one, because the same client did purchase the larger route, and we will be doing this again in about two to three years. But imagine this same style table on a 4x scale. So after getting the rough shape, I put the steel back on. That way I could scribe the actual steel itself without the washer. And this is the idea that I had to kind of make it cohesive with the root. I didn't want a straight 90 profile cut on the wood. So I thought it would be really cool to taper from the bottom all the way up to the edge of the steel at an angle. You know, we had to give it a little bit of flavor. So I started with the cuts all, switch over to the Rotex, and then I started working with the Dremel. The Dremel's actually really cool. It comes with multiple attachments. Uh, this is the first time I've actually even used one. I bought it just for this project. I had to switch between the sanding attachment and the cutting attachment to get in some of the tight spots. Another really cool part about this project is my client actually gave me creative freedom on the entire thing. So I could pretty much run with what I thought would be cool. This was very exciting for me, but also extremely terrifying because I did not want to screw it up. So after I got all of the wood shaped, I started drilling some holes in random spots that I knew were going to be hidden by the root. That way it was all one solid unit. At first I wasn't going to cut out this portion, but it just looked kind of funky to me. So I used the Dremel, I used some RAS, did a little hand sanding too to shape it, and honestly it looks so much better with that wood deleted. You know, doing this was kind of risky because I put in a ton of time and a ton of work to make this base, only to hope it would look good once it was installed. Being sponsored by SuperClear has been super awesome. I've really wanted to try and incorporate their products into a wide variety of different projects. And with this one, since at this time it was going to be outside, I wanted to seal the bottom of this base because it was going to be directly on the ground. It essentially just gives you a waterproof barrier so that way zero water can penetrate. And I've actually done it on the bottom of legs for outdoor furniture before and it works super good. So I let this sit for 24 hours, did a rough sand with 220, and then did a second coat. This pretty much concluded the bottom of this table. It didn't need to look super pretty. I just needed enough coverage so it was all sealed up so no water could get up through it. So originally I had said that this is Philippine mahogany. I'm not quite sure if that's the actual species, but as I put finish on it, you can really see that it is from the mahogany family. Nice deep red color and I was totally digging it. Really happy with the outcome and I couldn't wait to see it with the steel on it.
So it's patina time. I started with the Sculpt Nouveau Black Magic, neutralized it with water, dried it off, and then I did a second coat. I do a heat treat with a torch. That dissipates any sort of moisture in the steel, and then I immediately coat it with an oil. This will completely seal it up and prevent any sort of rusting down in the future. Okay, here it is. Little wax on, wax off, and the base is complete. Let's go put it on, baby. That thing in there, baby. Huh? Put it in, baby. Oh, you want that air pro? Yeah, on? baby. Reinforcements. There you go, look. Man, I am so happy on how this thing turned out. It looks so good in my opinion. We have the steel to separate the bottom piece of wood so it's not just wood on wood. I did leave some overhang on the ends for those steel standoffs that I'm gonna have to make for the glass top to sit. And with the top being five and a half feet wide, I needed some support on those two ends that didn't have any structure from root. So I've had these rusted rods for years sitting outside and honestly, it was like fate. They matched the root perfectly. So I cut them down, drilled in taps so they can accept the stainless bolt that goes through the entire wood and steel structure. All right, so we're back. We're doing the same heat treating process that I did to the base of the root, taking out all of the moisture. I'm applying a paste wax on this one so it seals it in and to make sure that there won't be any sort of rust transfer if it's touched uh, by anyone who's eating by this table. Last piece of the puzzle, we are almost there. Drilling a couple holes to fasten down the rod and then it's go time. Today's the day. We're moving her in. All right, so we're walking down the street with the route. See it there, hopefully holding off traffic. Let's go, baby. Fucking sick. Oh, fuck. Safety third, right? What was that fucking residge? Uh, Safety third. Buckle uh, up. Yeah. Buckle up for safety, kids. Okay. 
stop right there. Alright, so go ahead and pick it up. Oh my god. Sure you're up? Hello. Hello. Go ahead and go down slow. Okay. Okay, one, two, Lift. three, straight up. Okay. This way? That way, just a little bit. Okay. Right there. Go slow. Get out of there. How we feeling? Pretty good. Yeah, clean it. I would have done a better job. It looks so sick. This is great. I gotta clean it. I'll get you. It is bougie. Yeah, look at the dates. It's so sick. Did you guys have a big year on the ones? Yeah. No one thought of that. Hey, it looked exactly like the best one. So, guys, there it is. The infamous ancient redwood root is complete. I think it turned out amazing. I would love to hear your thoughts. But we ran into a snag, and I'm not one to hide failures. So check out what happened after two weeks of use. This thing got absolutely hammered. There are scratches everywhere. There's swirl marks from wiping it up. I even applied a ceramic to this on top of the raw acrylic to help with scratches, but it just didn't hold up at all. But I had to find another solution. So I hired a couple guys to come and put a PPF on it. PPF is a paint protection film that you normally would see on like a car. They apply it to the front, or a lot of people like to call it a clear bra. But first we had to get it back to where it was two weeks ago with zero scratches. So I actually started down to 1000 grit, got all the big scratches out and progressed up to about 3000. And I was able to repolish it to a stage two. I didn't put a sealant on it because the PPF wouldn't have adhered properly to it. And then I brought in the guys the same day to install this coating. But as you can see, this thing looks scary. Damn near gave myself a heart attack until I started polishing right here to see it come back to life. So after that, they prepped the root to not get wet. And they started the process of cleaning the top really well to remove all of the debris. They're using Expel's Ultimate Plus line of PPF. It has a self-healing technology to where as it does get scratched up, all you have to do is pour hot water on it and it instantly takes away the scratches. It's super cool to see. They ended up buying a 72 inch roll by a little over 14. So we had some overhang all the way around because I wanted the sides wrapped as well. This stuff is actually pretty cool. You can get it in high gloss like I did here, but also in matte or a satin finish. So James owns Asbel Designs here in Redding, California. If you're needing any sort of PPF work, be sure to hit him up. He did an amazing job, as you'll see here in just a second. They took their time and really made sure that it was damn near perfect. Having Reynolds Polymer as the video sponsor, but also having the product to be used in the video has been really cool. They were amazing to work with when I purchased this piece of acrylic. One of their more notable projects has been this massive 100 foot suspended sky pool in London. Their main source of work is big aquariums like this and also monolithic castings. However, they're really trying to break into the furniture market. So if you guys have some crazy cool one-off projects, be sure to keep them in mind. Some of the stuff that they do is so custom, you can kind of go a little bit crazy. So if your ideas seem a little bit out of reach, definitely give them a call and see if it's something that they can do because their shop and their setup is just incredible. All right, guys, we are done, completed. PPF's installed, all the scratches are gone. I'm over the moon with how this looks, but I would really love your feedback. You know, doing something like this, you really hope to do a, an ancient piece like this justice to make everything cohesive and work together. So the Redwood Root is now in a brand new high-end sushi restaurant in Redding, California. The name is called Raw. They ship in their sushi straight from Japan twice weekly. They have a great hot menu as well, but if you're in the area, please come by, check out the table, come get some food, and let me know what you think if you've ever seen it in person. So thank you guys so much for watching this one. If you've made it this far, props to you. 
It's been an incredible project. I learned a ton along the way, and I hope you stick around for the next series of videos. I've got a really cool custom poker table coming up and a ton of stuff planned for the next two to three years. But like I always say, get out there and build something. Cheers.